don't know how fast these banks are taking over the properties. And that doesn't take into consideration the thousands that they're going to file in 2012 because they are geared up again to file more and more foreclosure actions in 2012. In fact, that's what the uh, our Republican legislature and uh, governor are trying to ram through right now as we speak. Right, there's those bills. The bills try to accelerate the foreclosure process so that they don't have to use real documents or, you know, basically. It just legalizes foreclosure fraud and uh, legalizes the fastest, quickest bank takeover of land. Uh, yeah, and that's what we're really talking about. Without, the any, without any protections. Now, my, I will have to say that I'm not sure if things are going to change that much, even if the bill does get through, because yeah. the judges are not acting in their capacity to administer justice and protect the people that come before them and are facing a fraudulent, corrupt system. So, But when you read these stories about how long it takes to foreclose in Florida, please understand that what Realty Track does, who feeds these numbers out there, is they work from the end and see how long it took that particular foreclosure. They eliminate from their stats any consideration of a foreclosure that was filed and successfully resolved or resolved in favor of the homeowner. Those don't go into the stats. If you consider everything that goes into the stats, it takes an average of less than a year from filing to foreclosure in most of our cases. But you'll still hear all these stories in the press. Oh, it takes 673 Alex? days in Florida, <laughs> and we need to have a new law that's going to speed this through. Well, no, it doesn't. And the new law is just going to further crash the economy. But the banks are so good at feeding the propaganda machine that you'll see these stories and you'll see reporters pick up these stories and say, well, yes, it take, not only takes 673 days in Florida, it takes 668 in New York. So every time you see one of those numbers, you have to say, oh, wait a minute, I don't think so. That's not been the experience I see. The experience I see, people get served with foreclosure papers and the vast majority of them simply default. They walk away in shame. They don't hire a lawyer, they don't fight it, they don't check to see whether the bank has any right to foreclose. They don't check to see whether the bank owns their home that's claiming to own their home, which is the big issue. Does the bank really have the paperwork to show that they own the home? They walk away in shame and sorrow. So from the time the bank files to the time the final judgment is entered, it's more like eight months, not two years. Uh, I don't know if anyone else in this group is facing foreclosure right now besides Lisa? Run. Oh, all right. <laughs> People facing foreclosure. Good. There's, a, there's a, at least four of us in this group that are facing foreclosure right now. And we know the kind of response we're going to get from our judges. Uh, and that we're not going to have uh, the kind of court system we wish we had. We're not going to ha be able to present the evidence we wish we could present in our courts because there is a... Uh, bias, judicial bias. Right, there is a judicial bias and there's a presumption of correctness when the bank presents the document. <laughs> By God, these bankers wouldn't lie. But they have lied. They've lied repeatedly, they've lied to cr crush the economy, and they're lying in our courtrooms every day. Uh, at Occupy this... Uh, Sunday, where I was very honored to be a guest, one of the things I suggested is that anybody who has any time start observing the foreclosure process in our courtrooms. Go in and watch. Watch how our foreclosure defense attorneys are treated by the courts with utter contempt and disgust. Watch how our unrepresented homeowners who are trying to represent themselves are treated in the courtrooms. Watch how the bank lawyers are given all kinds of courtesy by many of the judges that homeowners are not given. And then start writing about it and write to the blogs, of course, but also write to the chief judge and also write to anyone else that whose address you happen to have, especially those who are trying to push through this foreclosure legislation, which is going to be even more harmful for us all.
Any foreclosure defense attorneys want to say anything? I'm not a foreclosure defense attorney, but I will say one thing. I'll say whatever you want, Ron, because Ron came the furthest. Ron came over 300 miles for this event tonight. I don't think we're that far, but... Well, by the time you go back, it Ron came from the other side of the state for this event. Um, if Dutch Bank, or any bank for that matter, in, this, in my case it is Dutch Bank, has the lawful legal right to take my house, that is not a problem. Girls, the I'm problem sorry. is. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. The problem is they don't have the legal right, and therefore, that's not. And creating fraudulent, falsified documents doesn't give them that right. Either. That's right. And one more court today. One more appellate court chimed in on that. Colorado, I believe. No. Uh, yeah. The appellate court in Colorado. It was a Deutsche Bank case, and all along the poor attorney in bankruptcy had, uh, the poor homeowner in, in bankruptcy had fought and said, this bank does not own my mortgage. This bank does not have the note. And the attorney for the bank came into court and said, your honor, we have the note. We could produce it any time. And it was never questioned further. And today the appellate court in Colorado said, that's not the same as evidence. Having a bank lawyer stand up and say we could produce it any time is not the same as having them produce it. Their case is thrown out because they did not produce the note when they should have. Holding the banks to the same standard as every other litigant, even that would be a huge step forward for us all. And we have a problem in Florida, but other states, the judges are really starting to put the brakes on this. And, and the legislatures in other states. Oklahoma had two excellent Supreme Court decisions come down January 17th. And the attorney, Philip Taylor, uh, was very gracious with his time and spoke to us on our radio show and said, you know, he, he's hot and he has filed many other cases that the, the system in Oklahoma is if you don't like a lower court decision, you file something with the Supreme Court, and then if they don't, the Supreme Court doesn't want to hear it, they kick it down to the appellate court, and then the appellate court hears it. And the Supreme Court, he filed six of these cases, the Supreme Court did not kick down any of them, and released the first of the two opinions, which only shows us how, what they're going to react. And they were both Deutsche Bank cases, and they said, essentially, <coughs> this is a bunch of nonsense. We don't know what you're trying to do here, but you can't do it in Oklahoma. So the number one signer on the documents to prove that Deutsche Bank owns the property is Linda Green out of Doc X in Alpharetta, Georgia. And this name is now so common that there's a church group, there are 200 women in North Carolina who all wear t-shirts that say, I am Linda Green, which I just love. I, I, that just made me very, very happy. Actually, I think our cameramen today, when they had to get past my gate at community, they said, who are you here to see? And they said, Linda Green. And, and my guard said, okay. <laughs> That's what everyone said. <laughs> I did. Come right in. Uh, but the Supreme Court has said to lawyers who have used these fraudulent documents, you have an ethical obligation. And here's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to notify the judge in private, in chambers, not the homeowner, not the attorney for the homeowner. Not, you, the, new not the new owner. Not the, the new owner, just you, bank attorney, and the judge. Go in the back room and the judge will decide whether to tell anybody else about your fraudulent documents. And that's a big oh hell no, you know, because really if they're taking away our homes with documents made by Linda Green in Alpharetta, Georgia, we all have a right to know that. How many did got filed in just Palm Beach County? Over 1,700 Linda Green mortgage assignments in an 18-month period. They were used to transfer mortgages to trusts for over a half a billion dollars in 18 months. Then consider Cheryl Sammons, who was the office manager for the ever-famous David Stern. She signed thousands more. And then if you consider those from LPS in Minnesota, in just an 18-month period, Palm Beach County lost over two, close to $2 billion in mortgages from phony mortgage assignments. That's just one county. So that's something to consider about the extent of the foreclosure fraud that's happening across the country.
Of course, Lisa doesn't have a Linda Green. Lisa has... Uh, Chase Home Finance. Uh, Lisa has a group called Whitney uh, Cook and... Uh, Whitney Cook and Christina Trowbridge and uh, Shelly, uh, Stacy Spawn, and Barbara Hinman. Well, Barbara Hinman's here. And again, I, I, you can. Print. I have LPS. Yeah, Bethany you have LPS. And again, you can print out the ones, the Wells Fargo ones. Wells Fargo is the number one homeowner in the country. I mean, in the in the county and in Florida, more than Fannie, more than Freddie. Deutsch is a second or third in most counties. So, uh, you know, and Wells is always the bank that says, "Oh no, the other banks engage in these practices. We're the good guys. We didn't do that. Oh no, that's not really true either." Uh, Wells was also one of the worst. There are ways the banks can start to turn this around. Obviously, we need a moratorium on all foreclosures until there's a complete investigation. And not just an investigation. We actually want to see the results of the investigation published somewhere. Not just, oh yes, we're investigating and we have been for two years. And we didn't find doors. anything wrong. And trust us, right, because <laughs> we hired the bank to look at each other's papers. No, we need an investigation with results. We need a moratorium on foreclosures until we get those results. You look at someone like Professor Black, who did a thorough investigation back in the 80s. That type of investigation needs to occur now. That's right. That's right. And have we offered? I, you know, I, I did take the time to print out every single DOCX mortgage assignment in Palm Beach County. It's in six big binders in my living room, all my Cheryl Salmons for 18 months, and all my LPS. It's a 20 volume set in binders that each hold 350 pages. And I did write to uh, Pam Bondi, our Attorney General, and say, I have the evidence you all need. You, you know, It's right here in my living room. Anytime you want to come look at my documents, you're welcome to come look at them. But so far, nobody has come look at them. When I first discovered all these bad names on my documents and, and met Lisa, met the Foreclosure Hamlet and Foreclosure Fraud Group, one of the things I started to do besides writing articles about it was to try to contact my officials in this county. I've lived in this county for 32 years. I've practiced law here for 32 years. I know a little about this county. And all I wanted to do was meet with Sharon Bach, the clerk of the courts, and show her that there were tens of thousands of fraudulent documents being filed in our county records. Which she has on her website, one of her one of the parts of her motto is to protect the integrity of the land records. And I could not get a meeting. And even after I thought, well now that I'm a movie star, <laughs> after my 60 minutes appearance, <laughs> she would have to meet with me. Because I was famous then. But I wrote to her again and said, Sharon, you know, dear Ms. Bach, all I want is 15 minutes to show you what's wrong, what's happening in our land records. Still no meeting. Who else did I write to? State Attorney Mike, Michael McCullough. Please give me 15 minutes. Just give me 15 minutes. No such meeting. You know, so many people are sad that he's resigned today. I don't see him. See, I don't, I don't feel sad about this at all. You know, I, I'm glad I, that anybody who isn't protecting homeowners should move on. As complicit, not just homeowners. It's, it's what you said. It's the entire fabric of our community. Yeah, the whole financial system. That it's not just homeowners. It's tenants. Tenants are suffering terribly. I talked with the liaison between the Palm Beach County Schools no, I'm and I'm homeless I'm families. I'm and if you can imagine, she's very, very, very busy. And she said many of the families are tenants that just one day get noticed that the bank now owns the home and they need to get out and it's very very disruptive to families especially when they're school children you know where are they going to move how do they get together first last and security deposit the previous landlord was taking their rent money at times or has just disappeared and it, it's very disruptive. It's not just homeowners. This is causing a huge, huge rift across our entire community. Yeah, the whole community, the schools, the stores, the shops, I mean, everything. Everything being, it gets wrapped up into the cyclone of decline when these things occur. And everybody loses except for the banks.